Sean Thompson has tackled some of the world's biggest waves and conquered them. This world surfing champion has been riding the crest of the waves ever since the 80s, taking and sharing lessons he has learned from the world's oceans and using them to conquer challenges in everyday life. His many honors include being listed as one of the 25 most influential surfers of this century the greatest tube rider of all time, as well as receiving the SIMA Environmentalist of the Year Award in 2002 and the Surf Rider Lifetime Achievement Award this year. This business finance graduate from the University of Natal has gone on to become the best-selling author, a film producer and a highly successful entrepreneur, founding Instinct and Solitude Sportsway, a multi-million dollar international apparel venture. He is a passionate environmentalist serving as chairman of the advisory board for the Surf Rider Foundation, the world's largest surfing environmental group. He is currently working on a children's book and a series of inspirational sports films. Let's welcome back onto South African shores one of our very own to tell us more about the surfer's code and his 12 simple lessons for riding through life. I give you Sean Thompson. The great uh, Irish poet, W.B. Yeats, said some wonderful words, and he could have been describing that surfing experience. A lonely impulse drove me to this tumult. I balanced all, brought all to mind. The years to come seemed waste of breath, a waste of breath the years behind in balance with this life, this death. So death is a very present part of the big wave experience. But this death in itself heightens the surfing experience and is part of every single surfer's obsession. Today I wanted to talk to you about inspiration. To me, the key attribute of any leader in any country is to inspire. When you think of the great leaders in times gone by, not leaders of great armies, but great leaders, Mahatma Gandhi, JFK, Martin Luther King, Nelson Mandela, and now the new American president, Barack Obama. All these people inspire. They make us better than we think we are, and they inspire us to do great things. All these leaders have inspired me throughout my life, but something else has inspired me, and that's been the ocean. The ocean has been a terrific source of inspiration to me. It's been a terrific solace to me. It's been a refuge to me. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit today about the simple lessons that I've learned about life and I've learned about inspiration from being involved with the ocean. And I call it the secrets of the surface code. What can you possibly learn from a surfer? I'm sure that's what a lot of you people are thinking. I wanted to talk to you today about what being stoked is this amazing feeling of exuberance that all surfers have, this awareness of danger that we have in the ocean environment, and how these metaphors all translate into your lives. I want to talk about the interconnectedness of people. I want to talk about a positive attitude and optimism. I want to talk about perseverance. I want to talk about meditation and escape. And I want to talk about completing what one has begun. Leaders inspire us through action. And this enthusiasm that our leaders have is contagious. I want to talk about being aware of environmental dangers like the economy, competition, and trends. And this notion of all of us being connected by one ocean. So let's go and get a wave. First up, I want to talk about a simple concept, never turn your back on the ocean. My late father, Ernie, who died in 1981, was South Africa's best swimmers. He came back from the, the war in, let me just get under the lights. He came back from the war in 1946 and was training for the Olympics and training for the Empire Games. And he was savagely attacked by a Zambezi shark. He was 21 years old at the height of his athletic career. And in one bite, his life was shattered. But my earliest memories are of my father taking me down to the beach by the hand and taking me into the water 200 yards away from where he was attacked. So this whole notion of staying close to your passion and never turning your back was something that he exemplified 
to me as a young lad growing up on the Durban beachfront. And this concept is also, as a young boy, when I started to travel, when I started to compete, I was a professional surfer for 16 years on the professional surfing tour. I won my first competition at 16, and I won my last competition at 34 years old. It really was brought home to me when I went to Hawaii, this awareness of loving what you do, but being aware of the environmental dangers out there. And I met many of the Hawaiian beach boys when I traveled over there, and they would say to me, Sean, this concept that your father's taught you about never turning your back on the ocean, it's our concept. This is a uniquely Hawaiian concept. And it really relates to the fact that the ocean is a tremendously dangerous place. Like the environment around us, it can be a dangerous place. But for me, it has been, and throughout my life, a wonderful source of joy. But it is a dangerous place, as evidenced by my father being attacked by a shark, but continuing to love the ocean. I wanted to just talk a little bit about where this whole concept of surface code came from and how doing something without gain can change your life. A number of years ago, a friend of mine was having a surfing competition at a place called Rincon, which is the second best wave in, South Af second best wave in the world after Jeffrey's Bay in South Africa. And he said, Sean, I'm having a group of children come down to the beach and I want you to give them something. I want you to give them something by which they will remember this particular day. So my wife and I had our business. We thought, well, we'll give them some clothes or we'll phone up a surfing brand, get some sunglasses or some surfboards and really give these kids something special so they'll remember the day. And then I thought, no, what I'll do is I'll go home and I'll give them the knowledge that I've gained from surfing for 44 years. So I sat down in front of my little Mac and in 20 minutes I wrote down the 12 most important lessons that surfing had taught me about life. Simple. Stream of consciousness, 20 minutes, 105 words. And I printed them up on these little cards, little plastic cards, and I gave them out to the children on the beach that came to, down to the Rincon to see this, this surfing event. And uh, simple concepts, all these concepts that I'm talking about, exactly the same concepts. There'll always be another wave. I'll paddle back out. I'll take the drop with commitment. I'll pass on my stoke. Surfing terminology that is also can be applied to, to everyday life. The kids really love these simple little cards. The moms asked me for the cards. The dads asked me for the cards. And it turned into this groundswell throughout the United States until we started getting thousands and thousands of requests for the card. So what we did is we started putting the cards in our clothing, and ultimately we started handing out hundreds of thousands of these cards. And then I started talking at universities. I started talking at environmental groups just about what surfing can teach you and how surfing can inspire uh, one's life. And the lessons that surfing can teach you can be used in, in everyday life. And ultimately, it, it, it led to this little book that uh, actually has just been released this week in South Africa. I'm really thrilled about that, called Surface Code. And it all started out by me just giving something to someone because I wanted to do something good. And it has really taken my life in a completely different direction. This whole notion, for all of you people out there, I think there's 1,600 people out here, it feels great to give. I don't know who it benefits the most, the giver or the recipient. It feels great just to do something for nothing. Just whether it's an employee, whether it's a friend, just give someone something. Give them a leg up, give them a smile, and it comes back. Man, it is amazing how this simple concept of doing something good comes back to us. And I'm sure all of you have heard countless speakers and you've read countless business books but if, I'm hoping that if there's one thing you take away from my little discussion today, and that's do something good for someone and don't expect anything in return. It does and will definitely take your life down another path. It is amazing how powerful the simple concept of giving is. And there's a new paradigm shift today in the world. This notion is getting stronger. It's like a wave that's building and it's getting bigger. And I think the more of us that do something good, for nothing, the better this world will be. Always paddle back out. This is a picture taken at Waimea Bay back in the day in the 70s and the 80s. This was considered the Mount Everest of surfing. You saw some bigger wave, a bigger wave earlier, towed in by a jet ski, but we used to paddle into these waves by hand, and this was a very, very um, dangerous uh, break. The waves would get 25, 30 feet. Um, and my first uh, surf out there was during a surfing competition. It was during the final of one of the biggest events in the world. 
And I remember paddling out there, and I was very determined to win this event. And I took off on the first wave of the final, paddled over this wave, it was about a 20-foot wave, took this very, very late drop, and the board went into space. And I landed, and in big wave surfing, you try to penetrate the surface of the water. If you don't penetrate the surface of the water, you're totally exposed. And I couldn't penetrate, and I remember skipping across the surface of the water, and this wave landing on my back with a terrific concussion, and I thought I'd broken my back. I thought I was a dead man. And eventually I got washed in, and um, I saw my board floating in the rip, and I paddled up to my board. And I had a fundamental decision to make on my board. What should I do now? All the other surfers had seen this terrific wipeout, and they certainly would not have thought less of me if I had got on my board and paddled back to the beach. But I got on my board and I paddled back out. And um, by doing that simple paddle back out, it gave me so much more courage and confidence for the future. There were six of us in the final. I came sixth in the final. But to me, I felt that just by paddling back out, I was a winner. And this simple lesson has really helped me through business. I've been an entrepreneur all my life. I've started companies that have been very successful, that have you know, generated hundreds of millions in sales. I've started companies that uh, have been failures as well. And... Um, but I've always paddled back out. Um, this notion of always paddling back out has always been so important to me. My wife Carla and I started a company, uh, my beautiful wife's in the audience somewhere, uh, about seven years ago. We called it Solitude, and we'd recently moved to America. And uh, the company started to grow and started to prosper. We started to sell in the finest stores in the land, in Saks and Barneys and Bloomingdale's, Nordstrom's, wonderful stores like selling in... In, in, in Edgar's and Truworth's and Markham's. And th we thought we were really on a roll. Then we hit, we hit a rough patch. And uh, we ran out of money. We couldn't fund the orders. We had millions and millions of dollars in orders. And um, we were tapped out. So we decided to close down the business. So our friends came in and started dismantling the warehouse. All the furniture started to be moved out of the, uh, and all the inventory started to be, to be moved out. The last thing that was left was the company server and my, my workstation. This was all on a Friday afternoon. It was very, very hard and very humiliating for an athlete that's been success, relatively successful all his life. But I said, no, you can't take my workstation. You can't take the server. I just had this feeling. On the Saturday morning, um, I got a call from a friend of mine. He said, listen, I was at a baseball game and a... Um, guy came up to me and he said, admired the shirt I was wearing. And he said, well, it's a solitude shirt. They're closing the business today. And uh, the guy said to my pal, you know, my father and I are investors. And we love that brand. We've seen it around. We've seen it in the top stores. Maybe we can do a deal. On the Sunday, we did a handshake deal. Monday, we opened for business. And a few years later, I did a we, we did a deal, and the company grew to 50 million in sales. And for me, that notion of just not giving up and always paddling back out um, helped me through that time when, should I shut it all down or should not shut it down? I paddled back out, and it went on to become a big brand in the United States. And it all came out of that simple notion of perseverance and paddling back out. Never fight a riptide. This is the beach that I grew up in Durban, South Africa, uh, a place called the Bay of Plenty. And you can see on the right-hand side of the picture, there's an area the waves <clears throat> aren't breaking. This is called the Riptide. It's a very dangerous place. If you're a swimmer, you get caught in the Riptide, you get sucked out to sea, and you can drown. If you panic and you're not aware of the dangers of this rip Riptide, there's a good chance that you will drown. The Riptide, as a metaphor for life, represents these inexorable trends that are running through society. And we all have to be aware of these trends, the economic downturn, the failure of the mortgage securities in the United States. One must be aware, but one must not, let, one must not panic and let these basic trends overwhelm us. This little concept was really brought home to me as an athlete. In a, um, 1977, I was the number one surf in the world. And the guy on the right, wearing the really short shorts, was my rival. We were in a, locked in a, in, in, a, in a death fight, the two of us, for the world title. And also, we were in a battle to see who could wear the shortest tie to shorts. <laughs> and I think I might have got him there. I'm on the left, and this uh, guy, Mark Richards, is on the right. 
Mark had invented a brand new type of surfboard, a surfboard with two fins, and on the left you'll see my type of surfboard. It was a board with what we call the single fin. So this twin fin was a unique technological advancement. It was new technology in the context of the surfing world. I was the world champion, Mark was the runner-up uh, that year. And I could see him surf on this new technology. I could see the effect it was having on his surfboard, and I could see the future. I could see that this guy was going to have a profound impact on the sport. But I refused to accept the reality of that situation. And for two years, I continued to compete on my single fin board while he went off on this amazing success run on his twin fin and ultimately he became a world champion four times in a row. But the simple lesson for me there was sometimes reality is right there in front of you. Sometimes you can see it, but dogmatism, ego, and stubbornness prevents us from making the right decision. And certainly for me, it prevented me making the right decision. And ultimately, once I got in the twin fin, I started to succeed again as a competitor. But that lesson was rammed home to me for two years. Dogmatism, stubbornness, and not accepting reality just does not work. Take the drop with commitment. Commitment. A very, very powerful word. This is the Banzai Pipeline in Hawaii, the single most dangerous wave in the world. It's killed about 23 people. Every year, one, two guys die at the Banzai Pipeline. And for me, this wave was always the ultimate challenge. As a young boy growing up in Durban, the Banzai Pipeline was this revered and feared wave. It was a wave that I always wanted to succeed at but I was terrified of this place. The first time I surfed out there, I sat out in the water for half an hour and didn't catch a wave. It was absolutely terrifying. Then I managed to get a few waves. I got drilled on the coral reef. These waves come out of the deep Pacific. They rear up on the shallow coral reef, and they just impact on the, on, on the coral. It's a very, very, very dangerous place. So I started to surf a little bit more, surf a little more, little baby steps, and it took me about three or four years when I started to feel a reasonable amount of confidence out there, but never in the class of the great Hawaiian surfers at that particular time. Then a, a young South African guy made me this sort of revolutionary type of surfboard. The board looked like a banana. It had a lot of curve in it. We called it the pink banana. And I walked down the beach at the Banzai Pipeline with this particular board, and all the Hawaiians laughed at me. They laughed at me. They said, Sean, where are you going with that pink banana? It was very humiliating for me. And I went out on the board, and I took off on my first wave, and this board fitted perfectly into the steep face of the Banzai pipeline, and it gave me this confidence. So I had this little bit of extra confidence, but still I never had the confidence to become a champion. I continued to ride, and then I had this revelation. One day out there, it was a very, very big day. This enormous wave came towards me. I was very frightened, and I remember swinging around and starting to paddle for this wave. And I was in that moment of hesitation that we all have when we're faced with an obstacle or a challenge. And I put my head down and I took three more strokes with absolute commitment. And that single wave changed my life. Because once I made the commitment, once I took the extra strokes, once in my mind I knew I was going to go over that edge, all the fear went away. It was incredible that commitment takes the fear away. We all have different fears, all of us, fear of success, fear of failure. But when you take that step and take the drop with commitment, it's amazing how that fear goes away, that fear dissipates. And as a young boy, this was a wonderful moment for me to know that you make the commitment, you take the step, and the fear goes away. Thank you.